Welcome to Plus TV. Today we're with one of the top hedge fund academics in the world, Stephen Brown. Stephen, thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome. Stephen is professor of finance at the NYU Stern School of Business, and he's released some interesting research on operational due diligence as a form of alpha. Could you introduce yourself and what sparked your interest in Ooh. studying the hedge fund space? My interest in due diligence came out from an early experience I had consulting to at ts pension fund, which at the time was the largest pension fund in the world. And they put a lot of emphasis on operational due diligence. And what I found really surprising in hedge fund space was that not so much effort was, was placed in, on due diligence. People thought that hedge funds were managing risk and you just had to have a few hedge funds and you could diversify away any remaining risk that, that was there and just concentrate on pure alpha. Hedge funds was perceived as pure alpha strategies. And people talk about hedge funds as offering S&P returns at treasury bill risk is the common term that you hear in, in the hedge fund world. And so that's, uh, that was the starting point of my inquiry. Why is due diligence not considered important in the hedge fund space? So what are the challenges in identifying the trends in operational due diligence in the hedge fund industry? When I started to think about operational risk, I realized this is a, a, a term that is well defined. Uh, operational risk is the risk of, of loss caused by a failures of processes, people, or systems, and is to be distinguished from market risk or a reputational risk. That's the de basal definition of the term. We understand what operational risk is, but we don't know how to measure it. That's really the challenge. And the three major challenges to defining operational risk are, number one, it's multidimensional characteristic. Uh, people, systems can fail in many different ways. Uh, number two is the data. I mean, the getting uh, information on operational characteristics is difficult. But the third and most important issue is the distinction between operational risk and financial risk. And, and I found, my research has clearly shown that Operational risk is more predictive of failure than is financial risk. Financial risk uh, is a um, symptom rather than a disease, and a disease is operational risk. Stephen, talk to us about your research on operational due diligence in hedge funds as a form of alpha. What have you learned doing your research? A point of departure was a very interesting database that came available at the end of, uh, at the beginning of uh, 2006. Um, the Securities and Exchange Commission required all hedge funds to register as investment advisors on the theory that, well, everyone else who advises uh, rich people as to how they spend their money, uh, how they invest their money, must register as, as uh, investment advisors. So hedge funds are no different. And so uh, they, hedge funds had to register as investment advisors. They had to file a Form ADV. And this Form ADV has a lot of information about the operational characteristics of the, of the fund, but has no information at all about financial characteristics other than the size of the fund. We got hold of every single Form ADV that was filed as of the beginning of 2006. And we analyzed these uh, in great detail. And we found some very interesting results. We looked at several operational risk in several different ways. One simple but fairly crude index of operational risk is whether or not there had been a, any legal or regulatory action taken against the fund. And of course, uh, there can be many reasons why there should be legal or regulatory action. But if a fund has operational uh, risk uh, concerns, then we would expect to find um, lawsuits and uh, regulatory action. And so that was the first and very primitive uh, index. Due 
due diligence, we argue, is a source of alpha. And this is, as I, as, as I repeat, is not looking at the financial characteristics, but looking at the operational characteristics. And um, one of our interesting findings is, in terms of financial risk, we think of leverage as a index of financial risk. The higher the leverage, the higher the financial risk. Well, the, uh, these um, uh, formative filings were very informative. For example, 2% of the hedge funds that reported to this database, had been, uh, the managers had been in jail. So what we find is really interesting is that, that firms with a high exposure to operational risk have lower leverage, not higher leverage. Uh, because the more the operational risk characteristics, the more sophisticated people will be, like prime brokers and bankers, will be less willing to lend the fund money. And so we find that while the higher the leverage, the higher the financial risk. The higher the leverage, the lower the operational risk. The, there's an inverse correlation between leverage and operational risk. And that's a common finding throughout our, our, our research. We also found that two other major findings of the work were, number one, that firms with a high degree of operational risk have a more concentrated ownership structure than f funds that have lower operational risk. I mean, the idea is that if you have operational risk, nobody wants to join your board because they're afraid of being sued. And we have some recent incidents of, of that. Uh, so um, these people do their own due diligence and, and refuse to join uh, funds that are questionable. The third finding was, was that conflicts of interest, especially external conflicts of interest, are highly correlated with operational risk. What do I mean by that? A fund that uh, does its own broker dealing is more, li more likely to have operational risk than one that doesn't, particularly small funds. An example of that is, is the Bayou Fund. The Bayou Fund uh, did its own broker dealing because they were saving their clients money. In fact, that was the only source of revenue for the firm. And, uh, and so that, that is clearly a source of operational risk. Elaborate more on your research on fund of funds. What have you learned? What have you discovered on operational due diligence in fund of funds? The study of uh, the SEC uh, ADV forms was very interesting. We published in the Journal of Finance, but a problem with the form ADVs is that there's not that much information about operational characteristics of the firms. We obtained a, a 444 private investigator reports of hedge funds that had a much richer a characterization of the operational characteristics of, of each of these hedge funds. And we're able to confirm all of the major findings of the earlier study. That um, operational risk uh, leads to diminished returns and higher probability of fund failure. And so operational risk, uh, we argue, is a significant source of alpha. But we found further information. And uh, we found that one of the most interesting findings was that these private investigator reports, they go into the fund manager and ask them a series of questions, and then they go and check the answers to, uh, with the fund administrators, with the courts. And we found when they asked the, the question, Do, did your fund ever have any legal or regulatory problems or, or issues, 9% uh, of them said no, and when they went to the fund administrator in the courts, they found they did indeed have legal and regulatory problems. One fund that claimed that they had no lawsuits at all, there was in fact 22 lawsuits outstanding. And so this suggests this finding, in this finding, which is to be published in the Journal of, Finan Journal of Financial Economics, uh, shows that the whole community, 
both the, the fund managers and the investors didn't take this due diligence process very seriously because why would you not tell the truth when you knew that they were going to be found out? And puts a central role on, on funds of funds, the primary conduit for institutional investors into hedge fund space. This study focused attention on the critical role of diversification in funds of funds. And we've, we've just, uh, myself and two professors at Sunny Plattsburgh have just published a study on diversification in funds of funds. The, uh, in the funds of fund literature, the central focus has been, what is the optimal number of funds in a funds of funds? Is it 10 funds, is it 20 funds, is it 50 funds? We argue strongly that's the wrong question. The right question is, how much diversification can we afford in terms of the necessity of doing the appropriate due diligence? After all, diversification by itself is no panacea. All hedge funds are subject to left tail risk exposure. After all, hedge funds are providers of liquidity. When liquidity dries up, a lot of hedge fund strategies go belly up. We all fall down together. So it doesn't matter how many hedge funds you own, you're still subject to tail risk. In fact, diversification in funds of funds magnifies this left tail risk exposure. And it's not surprising that during the financial crisis, as many funds of funds failed as hedge funds failed. So that, and uh, many people questioned, well, what, what is this diversification? Diversification is no protection against fund failure. And our research has shown that the critical issue is the affordability of due diligence. Because when we introduce that into the equation, we find that uh, diversification helps, but only when you can afford to do the due diligence. Over a fifth of all funds of funds have less than $26 million assets under management. And when you have $26 million assets under management, the fees that generates, cannot, you cannot afford to do operational due diligence. And so it's quite understandable that the small funds of funds earn about 200, 300 basis points less than their larger counterparts. I've studied this in more depth in a paper that's just coming out in the um, a review of asset pricing studies. I was once asked by university trustees to uh, present a simple formula, Professor, that will help us understand this process of due diligence for the uh, hedge funds. How, uh, can you give us a simple formula? I was challenged. I said, yeah, I think I can. I said, you form a quotient. And the quotient is the US dollar assets under management divided by the number of funds the fund of funds is investing in multiplied by the management fee. That number better be greater than $15,000. Why $15,000? $15,000 is the very minimum a due diligence costs. If you hire an outside consultant and you agree in advance that this outside consultant can share the results of his research with other people. Uh, when I talk with, uh, with uh, funds of funds, they uh, say $50,000 is a more accurate number uh, because that reflects the, um, the fact that you have to fly out to visit these these funds uh, at least four times, the uh, staff work and everything, it's more like $50,000. And that ratio uh, is, you think about it, you take the gross revenues from uh, operating the fund of funds, 
divvied up among the number of funds we're investing in. That's got to pay for all of the operating expenses of the, of the fund of funds business. Heat, light, power, wages, salaries, and operational due diligence. The really shocking result of our, our study is when we, we looked at the uh, fund of funds in operating, to, operating today, we find that only 25% of them can possibly afford to do the due diligence, which means that many funds of funds out there are not doing the due diligence which they are being paid to perform. And I, I, I think that is the central reason why we found that over the financial crisis, 21% of funds of funds failed. And it's as simple as that. They did not do the due diligence. And when we control for the affordability of due diligence, we find that, that funds that can afford to do the due diligence do better than funds that cannot afford to do the due diligence. And it accounts for most of the uh, gains that we see to scale in funds of funds. Um, funds of funds that do not do the due diligence fail more frequently than funds that can afford to do the due diligence.